Okay. Uh, okay, we're both side. We're going to talk about a topic. Talk about a topic that has to do with uh, this time of year. It has to do with really every day of our life, uh, and that is the topic of Birchas Torah. Topic of Birchas Torah. The Gemara says in uh, Nedarim on Daf Aleph, they have it in source number one. Uh, that one of the reasons that the Churban Beis Hamikdash took place was Shelo Berchu Torah Tchila. The Bnei Yisrael didn't say Berchas Torah. Well, as long as to Rasi, Shelo Berchu Torah Tchila, Ein Mavarchin Torah Tchila. And the question is, what was so bad about not saying Berchas Torah? And we might add, what was so hard about not saying Berchas Torah? They learned Torah. They didn't say Berchas Torah. Right. So what, what's so significant about Berchas Torah that they they didn't say it. It must have symbolized something, and that's why they wouldn't say it. And what? what how was that one of the reasons of the Chorban? And again, not the only reason. We have Sinat uh, Chinam, we have the Big Three, we have uh, a number of other Gemaras. But what is it about this Bracha? What is the unique, uniqueness of this uh, Bracha? Uh, <laughs> question two. Again, they're all building on each other. What type of Bracha is Birchat Torah? As we get ready for Shavuos, and we recognize the unique Zechus and privilege to learn Torah. So, what type of bracha is this? We know there are three categories of brachas. The Ramam tells us: Berchas Hamitzvah, before we do a mitzvah; Berchas Hanehenin, before we get pleasure; and Berchas Shavah Hoda. A bracha as a reaction to experiencing something, hearing, seeing, right? Something. Berchas Shavah Hoda. After going to the bathroom, after seeing a rainbow, hearing thunder, seeing lightning. Where does Birchas HaTorah fit in? Is there a simple answer? If you think about it, we, we paskin, that we say two brachas in the morning, at least two. Maybe it's even three. But at least two. And we say, Asher Kedoshanu, Mitzvah of Sivanu, La Asok, Mitzvah Torah. That sounds like a Birchas HaMitzvah. Asher Kedoshanu, Mitzvah of Sivanu. Then we have another bracha. Asher Bachar Banu, Mitzvah Amin. So how do we look at the relationship between those two brachas? And why do we need two brachos for? So what, what is the message of this bracha? What, is it, what are the categories? And the Ramban writes in his Sefer Mitzvah that it's a separate Mitzvah say to say the bracha. The Ramban doesn't count that as a separate one, but the Ramban, in his additions to the Ramban, counts a separate Mitzvah say daraisa, say Berch Torah. It could be the first Mitzvah say that we do every single day. We wake up in the morning, what do we do? We say Modani, okay, that's a nice minhag. Even the Tilo Shadayim, that's a Mitzvah to Rabbanan. Okay, mitzvah tzitzis, that's probably daraisa. That is daraisa. That's probably the first mitzvah we do, putting on tzitzis. One of the first ones is Berchas HaTorah. Bachar Banu Mikal HaAmim says the Ramban in Torah number three. Shenetz tavinu lahodos l'shmo yisbarach. We are commanded to thank Hashem every single day. Chalei shnikar HaTorah, every single moment when we learn Torah. Ala tov ha-gdola sh'asalanu, sito tarasu elenu. On the great gift that he gave us the Torah. And he let us know through the Torah, the ma'asim that he would appreciate. Through them, through those actions, we could get olam haba. <laughs> and then he, he continues, which we'll get back to his Lashem Hashem a little bit later. So the Ramah counselor is a separate Mitzvah Say Daraisa. There are no other brachas besides benching that are counted in the Minyan Mitzvahs that are Daraisa. So what is this? Even if you want to say Chazal enacted certain brachos or certain categories, here the Torah says that according to the Ramban. So the Torah classifies this as a mitzvah. You really have to figure out what the message is of this, of this mitzvah. Uh, finally, last question for us now. And that is the source. The source of the of the Torah is the Gemara Brachas Daf Yud Aleph from Abayz, which you have on the top now of the second page. There is a machlokas amoraim. Which part of Torah demands birchas Torah? Amar Rav Huna, lemikra tarach lavarich. You have to make the bracha when you learn Tanakh. Torah shebechsav, ule medrash eno tarach lavarich. But for medrash, you don't need a bracha. That's interesting. Only certain parts of Torah would require a bracha. Why would that be? Okay, we don't know any answers yet, but this is a birchaz mitzvah. You get the say, you get the mitzvah of learning Torah, whatever you learn. Torah shebechsav, Torah shebalpeh. 
How could Rav Huna say that? Rav Eliezer Omer, Rav Eliezer Omer, Lemikra Ulemedrish, Tzarech Lavarech, Lemishna Eino Tzarech Lavarech. So for Mikra and for Medrash, expansion on Medrash, but not for Mishnah. And interesting. Really? Mishnah does not need. For Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Af Mishnah Tzarech Lavarech, Avalatal Mudein Tzarech Lavarech. Not for Gemara. Again, they're in the Gemara. What Gemara did they have? Talking about the Svaris. Rava Avar, Af Talmud Tzarech Lavarech. And Rava says, even for Talmud, even for Talmud, which sounds like it's not the Iker. The Iker is still Torah Shabbat He says, even for Tamar Zorach Lavar, Tamar of Chia Barashi, Zin and Sagi, and I became a Kamei de Rav. Many times we were in front of Rav, Le Snuye Pirkim and Sifre de Rav, right, which is talking about the Mara. I've been mocked him with Hamashi Yadei, Ubarach. He said, Berch is a Torah. So what's the issue here? Why would only parts of Torah demand Berch as a Torah? And all of Torah is, is, is equal in, in, the, uh, in the eyes. In the eyes of the Igor. Sifra de Rav. They'll be asked, what is the Sifra? Uh, I don't know if this is Sifra, like we call it. Sfarim of Beirav, of the base Medrash. I'm not sure if this is uh, Mama Sifra. I don't remember. I have to check Rashi there. I don't remember. If Rashi comments on Sifra de Beirav, he says anything on there. Uh, no. He does not, Rashi does not say anything. Rashi there says, what does Gemara mean? I knew Svaris Tame Mishnah. Right, putting all things together, putting the Gemara together, the sources together. So why would only part of Torah require a bracha and not other parts of Torah? So why is it? Why wouldn't they say bracha the Torah, and that was a cause of the korban? What type of bracha is it? Does it fit into any of the other categories that we have? It's a separate mitzvah say, so it's a crucial question to be aware of and to answer. And why would you say only part of Torah requires a bracha, not, and not other parts? Maybe one final question. Says the Shulchan Aruch. Says the Shulchan Aruch, Simen Mem Zayin. That's the Simen in Shulchan Aruch about Berach HaZatorah. After the year, if you want a chazer, all of the Allah Lomaisa element, that's Simen. Somebody makes Berach HaZatorah, learns Torah, and then goes to work for three hours. Does not learn Torah. Anymore. Even should die to a below mode, we'll have a hepsic. Since he has in mind to come back, it's not a hepsic. Only say Berkhsar once in the morning. After I say once in the morning, I'm Yodse the entire day. That's a, that's a rule breaker. That's an exception. Right? If I sit in the sukkah and then I, I know I'm coming back for lunch, but I leave for two hours, I know I'm coming back, I still have to make a new bracha when I get back. Berchaz Torah is the only mitzvah. There's never a hefsek. Even if I don't learn for a couple of hours, no new Berchaz Torah is required. If you take a nap, three-hour nap, you go to the bathroom, you take an extended shower, it's not a hefsek. It could be a hefsek for other areas, <laughs> areas of halacha, but not here. So what exactly is the message of Berchat So there are two um, somewhat the most popular answers, suggestions, approaches given by the Achronim is that Berchat Torah is one of two options. One of two options. What would you say? What is the most simple option? What would somebody say? What do you think? What type of bracha is Berchat Torah? What category would it go in? Somebody say. What's the, what's the more obvious answer? I want to suggest something? I don't hear? Mitzvah. Mitzvah to learn Torah. So before we learn Torah, that's why you say it before you learn. So, good. I learned, I make a bracha and I learn Torah. Right. How, how is it? We still don't, that doesn't answer why only certain parts of Torah would get brachas at Torah. Whatever part of Torah I learn, I get a mitzvah of Talmud Torah. So why should there be any chilukim? But again, that's definitely one approach of many. But this is a berchas mitzvah, just like all other mitzvahs. I have a bracha before it, so too this mitzvah has the bracha before it. The other suggestion is, maybe berchas Torah is berchas shavach v'hoda. The other simple option. 
It's Shavach. Try to give praise to Hashem. He gave us the Torah. Thank you so much. It's a little tricky in that we say this bracha before we learn. Right? If it's a if it's Shavach, so then shouldn't we say it after? It's like every other, every other bircha shavach is a reaction. So to suggest that this is shavach v'hoda is tricky, but maybe it's an exception to the rule. Maybe it's a reaction to Har Sinai, not a reaction to learning Torah. Every day we have to say a shavach v'hoda to Har Sinai. Maybe. <laughs> and we say, because I were enacted that. And maybe that bufa is the machlokas between the Rambam and the Ramban about whether Birch is a Torah is the Oraisa. Now, if you look at the language of the Ramban, he's pretty clear that it is Shavach Vahodah. The Ramban who counts it as a separate mitzvah, I say, the Oraisa, right? Maybe this is a unique, right? a, a, a unique one, it's because the Torah says you have to do it. It said the Ramban, what was his language back in source number three? You don't have to go back. Then it's Tavinu lo hodos l'shmo yisbara. We're commanded to thank Hashem. Every time we learn Torah, and then he even adds, I didn't read this line before, just like we have a mitzvah to say after we eat, we have a mitzvah to say what's that comparison? Why is there a kashem? And the Ramban is comparing and Echaz Amazon is clearly Shavafodah. That's the basis of all Shavafodahs. The Ramban seems clearly to be saying that. And it's the Pashtus, the, I didn't mention this before, the Pashtus of the Gemara and Brachas, Adav Chavalev, is like the Ramban. It sounds pretty clear that Echaz Torah is a Mitzvah Daraisa, based on the Pasuk, Yishem HaShem Ekra, of a Godel Elokeinu. But either way, maybe the Ramban holds it's a Berchaz Hodah, while the Ramban says no. Berchaz Mitzvah. Just like all berchas and mitzvahs, which are the Rabbanan. There's no berchas and mitzvah that's Daraisa. The Ramban at least has a model. The Ramban has a model. Berchas Hamazon. The Rambam doesn't have a model. He holds it's a mitzvah de Rabbanan, just like all other brachos. And all brachos are de Rabbanan, and that's why the Rambam does not count it as a separate mitzvah. It's de Rabbanan, and it is a berchas ha mitzvah like all other uh, mitzvahs. If Rabbi, this is, yeah. Why isn't it a bakasha that you're saying about how not make it sweet? You should enjoy learning. Uh, so it has a uh, bakasha, I would say, as part of the bracha, for sure. Uh, but it starts off, the way it starts off, That's the bracha. Hashem commanded us to involve ourselves in Torah. Along the way, you're right. Why, why would the we end- have a bakasha in in this bracha, if it's just a birchas ha-mitzvah, why do we have a bakasha? Is there any other bracha that we have that's a birchas ha-mitzvah that has a bakasha in it? Anyway, you could say the first, meaning the, the there's two parts to the bracha, even if it's one bracha, that you say birchas ha-mitzvah and birchas ha So why can't you say that the first part of the bracha is going to be a birchas ha-mitzvah, the second part can be a bakasha, and then the sheba harbana would be sheba yeah. it's, it's hard to split a bracha into two halves. Unless you say, again, there's a machlok as we showed him, are there three or two brachas? If we say Baharevna is part of the first bracha, right, it's all one big bracha, part to say, it's either one or the other. You can't have a bracha that has two themes. It has to be one which has themes of the other. It's not inherently uh, two different categories of bracha. That would be harder. You're right. We have to figure out. If it's a bracha that mitzvah, why would it have such an unusual lasho? Why would it have? There are some brachos. Think about the bracha of marriage. The Ramam says that Kiddushin is a bracha, bracha sa mitzvah. The Ramam says that beferish. And what did we say about Kiddushin? And I share, Sivan, Ola, Rayo, Svan, Salon, Atarusa, Svan, Yitzhak, Svan, 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 this whole long bracha. But again, why do we say this whole long bracha by marriage if it's just a regular bracha sa mitzvah? Again, there's something unique about marriage. Maybe there's something unique about bracha sa Torah, but, uh, but you're right. It has to be uh, dealt with. Again, number one, what, what's that, what are the categories? There are a number of nafkaminas that we could suggest and we could see based on uh, this machlokas. Number one, you have to learn right away. Why do you have to say Berchaz You have to learn right away. <laughs> it's great to learn right away. Chazal instituted 
So we learn right away. What do we say in the morning? We say, Yibarach Hashem Yishmarecha, or Shabbat Sav, Elu Dvarim, and Elu Dvarim. Right, we say, um, uh, Mikra, Mishnah, and Gemara, the Brisa, second Elu Dvarim is a Brisa. So right, Chazal instituted that we that we learn right right after Berachas uh, Torah every morning. Uh, we also have it in uh, later on in Karbanos. We have the Carbon Tamid. By the way, if you don't say any Karbanos, the Carbon Tamid is the most important uh, part of Karbanos to say. That's Torah Shabbos And we have Eric Yezel Makoman, fifth Eric of Zvachim, which is Mishnah, and the Rebbe Shmuel Omer, which is Brisa, which is Gemara. Again, the Gemara, the Chazal, instituted to have all parts of Torah uh, covered. But you have to learn right away. This is a machlokas between the Rambam and Tosfos. You look at the Rambam, the Rambam says in source number six, the Chal Yom Chayv Adam Lebarak Shalosh Brachos Elu, the Achar Kach Tori Ma'at Midivri Torah. The Rambam says you have to learn right away. Right after you make Brachos Torah, right after you say Brachos Torah, you have to learn right away. And Tosfos says no. Tosfos says, good alpha and base, right, on that Gemara, no. You don't have to learn right away. Source number seven, quoting like um, against the Yerushalmi, but again, that's the Rambam Lishidasa. Rambam holds that it's a Berchaz Mitzvah that you have to learn right away. Whenever you do a Mitzvah, uh, the Berchaz Mitzvah, you always have to do the Mitzvah right afterwards. But if you say it's a Berchaz Shevach, Shevach on what? Shevach on Harsina that Hashem gave us the Torah. So then the Mela, you don't have to learn right away. Learn an hour later. There's no issue of Hefzik here. Because it's it's a shevach, a shevach in general to Hashem, not a berachas mitzvah that would be subject to the rules of hefsek. One nafkemina. What about halavai? We should all have this problem: thinking in Torah before making berachas Torah. Thinking that you wake up in the morning and tosfos is in your head. You woke up. You can't help yourself. You woke up. You just can't. Can't get rid of it. Rabbi Lapian was a uh, big Rosh Hashiva. He's up in uh, in the north. The he Rabbi Lau, previous chief rabbi, uh, writes in his biography. Uh, Rabbi Lapian was one of his uh, rabbeim. If you need a biography to read, I think I'm, I've mentioned this before. Uh, it's an unbelievable sefer. It's an unbelievable book. It's um, the name of it is um, what's the name of it again? Um, Tishlach Yotcha Lanar, I think, is the one in Hebrew, but it was translated in, uh, really, I'll, I'll, I'll remember it in a second. I'm just going blank for a second. Um, but anyway, he writes there, there, Valley of Yan, every day at the end of Shir, he used to tell the Talmidim which Tosfis or source they were going to discuss the next day. And he told the Talmidim, everybody look at the question and then close the book. Because he wanted them to think of the Tosfis or the Rosh, whatever it is overnight. He wanted them to leave him in suspense. Don't look at the answer. So what if we went to sleep we woke up and we're still thinking about the Tosfus. So we weren't allowed to think in Torah before saying Berchaz Torah. So that is the Machlokes between the Shulchan Aruch and the Gra. Shulchan Aruch says in Simon Mem Zayin, Amahar her b'divrei Torah eno tzarech levarech. Hear her does not need. Siva needs. But hear her does not need, says the Shulchan Aruch. Who are the Yochel lifts so dim alone in his time. You can also paskin. If you paskin, I have a shayla I never asked anybody. Are you allowed to answer? I get it sometimes. If I would, <laughs> you're not supposed to, but let's say I would. If I would open my WhatsApps before, before saying Berchas HaTorah. Would I answer a shayla? Yes, no, maybe, for Berchas HaTorah. So then you could just say yes, no. So this is writing. Siva usually requires Berchaz Torah, but if you're not writing Torah, you're just writing an answer. Shochan Aruch says, right? Yachol lift so gim, blown to see in a You have to explain yourself, so that's a problem. You're not explaining yourself. They would have got to hear her. So the Shochan Aruch says, no problem. You are allowed to think in Torah without making Berchaz Torah. And the Vilna Gon takes issue. The Vilna Gon says, no. Here a gra. The Khan Mavarech ala mitzvah. The Chilek la mitzvah be hear her. Berchaz HaMitz, Berchaz HaTorah is a Berchaz HaMitzvah, says the Grah. You get a mitzvah when thinking in Torah. Hello, Nomar Valgisabo. Ratzel Lomar Belev. The Moshe Gaza of Hegyon Libi, Vakoshki Lifson did. No, you're not allowed to. Some story about the Grah that he thought about Torah before he, before, uh, made Berchaz Torah in the morning, 
and he didn't. He, it never was clear to him because he thought of it before Berchas Torah or Lashita. So okay, but either way, what's enough to me? Now, according to the, if you say it's a Berchas it's like the Rambam, the Gras has a Beferish. Of course, even here where it needs bracha beforehand. That's the mitzvah. He's doing the mitzvah, then it needs a bracha. But if you say it's Shavach Hoda, okay, I can think of Torah beforehand. Hazal only instituted to say this bracha Shavach before you actualize your learning, before you vocalize. Just think again, Hazal did not demand that you say the Shavach beforehand. The second idea of here. Three. Third idea, says the Shulchan Aruch. This comes up various times during the year. Right, Slichas. I don't hear who's talking clearly. Hi, sorry. Um, it, according to the graph, it's a Birchas Mitzvah. Then if you're in the higher, right, theoretically, would, would one be over the and have already done it? So just like shaking a little, one should make the Birchas start, or it doesn't mean? No, I mean, you, you, you blew it for the thought that you already had, but you make a Birch Torah for any more thoughts, right, that you're going to have. So the thoughts that you already had, you did without bracha. So the, like if you ate something without a bracha, okay, you can't make that up. But if you need any more, you can make a bracha beforehand. What happens? Yeah? Isn't that, that's a Birch Hasemet. Birch Hasemitzvah might be different, no? Birch Hasemitzvah too. You can't make a bracha unless you're still doing the mitzvah. I think if I shook a lulav and I'm not shaking it anymore, I can't, I can't make the bracha on lulav anymore, right? If I'm, if I'm st- still going to be yotze some of the mitzvah, unless I was totally yotze, right? We, if you already were yotze your mitzvah of lulav, and now you want to, you can't make another bracha on lulav. Fill in, you can, right? Fill in, you can. Let's say that's a better example. I'm, st- I forgot to make a bracha before I put on fill in. Still wearing fill in. You make the bracha now because you're still wearing fill in the rest of the time. So number one is you have to learn right away. Number two, um, what about <laughs> what about uh, hearer? Number three, what if you say psukim of Torah, but not as Torah? Let's say slichos. Wake up early in the morning to say slichos. So you're going to say a lot of psukim in Torah, but not as Torah. You're going to say it as tefillah. Let's say somebody wants to say Tehillim in the morning. They have to say berachas Torah before. Says the Shulchan Aruch, Lo yikra p'sukim kodem berachaz ha-Torah. Hafa bishorim berach tachnunim. First day, you, you cannot. You have to say berachaz ha-Torah first. Yeh shomer shein lachush. Some say, don't worry about it. Even shein omer el berach tachnunim. No, you're saying it as tefillah. But nachon lachush, l'sfar rishona. Shulchan Aruch says, better to like the first one, to be machmir, aga, minok is far achrona. But the minok is like the second day, that you don't need. Again, two days here in the Shulchan Aruch. What's the issue? To hear it flips the other way, maybe. Here, Lachora, when I daven, I say Psukim and davening. Lachora, I'm not getting a key of Talmud Torah at that moment. I'm davening, I'm not learning. So if I say Psukim as Tfilah, if I say it's Birch Mitzvah, then I would not need beforehand because I'm not getting the Mitzvah. But if I say that it's Shevach Vahuda, it could very well be if you are coming in contact with Divrei Torah, even if it's not being used as Talmud Torah, Chazal instituted, you have to make a bracha. You have to recognize our Sinai. Because you're mentioning Divrei Torah, even though you're not getting the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Three. Then the fourth nafkamina before we get to another approach, is a huge topic, and that's the issue of women. Women. Halacha is not controversial, but the women, the uh, reason is controversial. I'm not saying that women are controversial, but uh, the, uh, the issue of women saying Birch HaZatorah is not controversial. Shokhan Arach says four words. Nashim Mevarachos Birch HaZatorah. Source number 11. Right? Women have to say Birch HaZatorah. That's clear. Why do they have to say Birch HaZatorah is very not clear. Three suggestions. Why do women have to say Birch HaZatorah? Says the Magen Avram. Source number 12. Says the Magen Avram, because women have a chiv to learn too. What does the Ramah say in Yeridea? Women have to learn all mitzvahs that apply to them. It says in Kiddush, women are exempt from Talmud Torah. 
that's not really. It says they have to learn all halachas that apply to them, meaning Arachayim, Yeridea, Heaven Ezer, Choshe Mishpat. You have to learn a ton. Says the Mug and Avram, you know why women have to say Berachas Dara? Because they have a chiv to learn Torah. They have a chiv to learn Torah also. Says the Vilna Gon, Lishitaso maybe. Says the Gra, no way. That can't be. Gemara says women are tourists from Talmud Torah. What? They have to learn all the mitzvahs that they're shy to? Is that Talmud Torah? No. Says the Gra. They have to do all the halachas. They have to follow the halachas. Then I'm a chuyiv. In learning per se, says the Gra. It's very important to come upon him. The Pasik screams, How can they say Vitzivanu? They're not commanded. And therefore, says the Gra, I argue with the Magad of Ram. They're not allowed to say Berchaz Torah because they are obligated in learning the Mitzvah Shalahem. They don't have that obligation, it's just a Heksher Mitzvah. It's a mitzvah that's preparatory for the mitzvah itself. The mitzvah per se of Talmud Torah women are not obligated in. So but again, both the Magad Avram and the Gra seem to be saying that it's a berachas mitzvah, and it's related to that. The machlokas is what about women? The Gra though adds. So why do I think women have to make berachas Torah? Just like women say brachos on mitzvahs asay shazvan grama. Ella says the Gra, Iker Abim Hashagaz at Postkim for Sharp Postkim, the Nashamar of Arachos, I'm coming to say, Shazman Grama, Moshe Kazati Leil. So says the Gra, you know how women can do it? They're two rows, but just like they can make a, they can make brachas on mitzvot that they are not obligated in. What's the problem with the Gra? What's the problem with the Gra? Anybody think of a problem with the Gra? Number one, by mitzvahs asay shazman grama, they're allowed to. They don't have to. Right? We don't, by, if a woman wants to shake a lulav, they're allowed to make a bracha. They don't have to. Here, they have to say bracha a Torah. So the girl's just saying that's why mitzivanu is okay? It's not a, such a strong parallel. And an even harder question. The Gra says, oh, just like women say brachas at Zvan Grama. Who is the, who is the Gra trying to explain here? The sheet of the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch says, and he started him out there, women cannot make brachas at Zvan Gramas. Only the Ramah says that. The Ramah quotes Bali Atosis. The Shulchan Aruch passes like the Rambam. All right, as I know, uh, now, one of my uh, daughter's friends just got married to a Sephardi. She's Ashkenazi. All her life, she made all these brachas. She just got married. Boom, done. No more. No more bracha on lulav. No more bracha on sukkah. She doesn't daven after things that Ashkenazi and daven. That's it. Many last things. You'll eat rice on Pesach. That's about it. But but other than that, the, the, she doesn't say. The, the Gra's explaining the Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch says women are not obligated. Are not allowed to say the brachas uh, bracha on zvan gramas. How could the gra do that? The gra knew this. It must. He's just giving a parallel, but but it's difficult to be a parallel. So again, but why do women have to say a bracha? Either the magen avram because they're chayiv and mitzvah shalahem. The gra because it's just like zvan grama. But both of them are kind of in the world of mitzvah. But then we get to Reb Chaim. We get to Reb Chaim. Rebbe. Yeah. According to the Gra, you said it's a Heksher Mitzvah for the women to learn. So why would they be making a bracha on a Heksher Mitzvah? That's also a good question, if it's just a Heksher Mitzvah. Yep. We don't usually make brachas on Heksher Mitzvahs. Correct. Good question. Unless you would say it's a Heksher Mitzvah that's a Mitzvah for other people. You never usually have that. Usually every Heksher Mitzvah is inherently a Heksher Mitzvah. It doesn't get a bracha. That's what I would say the Gra would answer. This is a Heksher Mitzvah, which is a Mitzvah for men. So that's enough to allow them to make the Bracha. Let me just write that. Okay. So then we come to Reb Chaim. 
the Briska Rav in his commentary on the Rambam, in Ilkhaz Brachas, quotes his father, Reb Chaim, who said as follows. This is either formulated as a unique type of Bercha Shavach Bahoda, or maybe it's a third category. Let's say it's a unique type of Shavach Bahoda. Said Reb Chaim, you know what Bercha Torah is? Blundish. It's a bracha on the Chefzah Torah. That's his Lashen. What does that mean? It's a bracha on the Chefzah Shal Torah. It's not a bracha on Limra Torah. It's a bracha on when I come in contact with the Dvar Hashem, I need to make a bracha. When I have the schus to be connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to connect to God's autobiography, Chazal demanded to recognize that event. Torah, Torah, bracha. Torah requires a bracha. Eina bracha al kiyam ha-mitzvah shal tamu Torah. Yakudim b'fnei atmu, the Torah boi bracha. What's the language? Kishem Hashem ekra. When you call out the name of God, which is the makar, Avu Godel, you have to ascribe greatness. Torah atzma tu bracha. So women are peturos from Talmud Torah. They're not peturos from acknowledging chefzah shal Torah when they come in contact with it. <laughs> and therefore, the tour of Talmud Torah has nothing to do with the chiv of this bracha for this experience. So again, it sounds like a fancy type of Shabbat Bahoda, but that's what Rav Chaim, that's what Rav Chaim says. And if this is true, then maybe, and maybe, one second, even go back to all the Nafkaminas. Here or her is a question. You need it. But if you say Psukim as Tfilah, maybe you would have to make a bracha. You're coming in contact with Torah. You know, or, you know, women have to make the bracha. So again, here or her is still a little question. But if this is true, just one other bracha, maybe this is the Machlokas Amoraim. What parts of Torah require brachas at Torah? Mikra, Mishnah. So maybe, rather, for Rapuni's opinion, the first opinion, only Mikra, only Torah Shebechsav. Torah Shebechsav is more in, intense directly from Hashem. That requires a bracha. Maybe the others don't. And each one expands a little more, depending how far you get from, from the source, from, from Mikra. That whole hierarchy makes sense, at least could fit in, based on the idea of of Reb Chaim. Uh, yeah, Naftali. Are, are there other examples of like a, of like a bracha like that? No. There's, there's, there's nothing. There's a unique, uh, again, Reb, uh, Ramban says this is the only bracha that's daraisa besides Birchaz Amazo. So it's going to be unique. There are not going to be too many models of this. It's only one Torah. Torah is the defining who we are. So when we come in contact with Torah, we have to make a bracha. It's, it's unique. It's not, uh, there are no models uh, for it. Rabbi, if you yeah. say that, then when a Ben Noach learns halachos that are shayach to him, he should also say bracha, no? Um, when a Ben Noach learns halachos. I don't know if he's connecting, you know, to the, there are different elements of Torah. There's information, and then there's the gift of Torah. We received the gift of Torah. Right? We accepted it willingly. It could be only those who are uh, of the Hashem willingly, you know, have the experience of Maimon Arsini. Right? It's going back to that event, which the Gaim were affected by, as we said yesterday, but it didn't take part in. Right? Eli will answer some of your questions also, Hashem, tomorrow. Uh, but, um, but again, it's an experience. I think it's a good question, but I think the answer would be is that we experienced Maimon Arsini. We're the ones that are appreciate the different levels of Torah, and that's why we're the ones that have to uh, make the bracha. There is one other uh, interesting point. There's a machlokas between Rashi and Rabbin Yonah on that Gemara and Brachas Yudal that we saw before. Right, what do we say? Only Mikra, maybe even Medrash, maybe even Gemara. So Rashi on that line says, the last, we paskin like even Gemara, why? So Rashi says on the bottom of the page, because Gemara is the Iker. Rashi. The Gemara is the Iker learning. It's like Rashi's holding Brachas HaMitzvah. Rabbeinu Yona on Brachas there, on Dafir Aleph, you know what he says? You know why Gemara also? Because Gemara also explains the Pesukim of the Torah. That's his Lashon, Source 18. What is he saying? The Gemara also explains the Pesukim of the Torah. It explains the Emek Bracha, one of the Talmidim of the, of the Briska Rav. It fits in beautifully to Rav Chaim. Because Torah requires a bracha. The Torah that Hashem gave us requires a bracha. And then the whole discussion in the Gemara is 
is this an expansion of it? And is this an expansion? The Gemara says, even Gemara, but why Gemara? Not because it's the Iker learning, because it's also an expansion of the Torah Shebech And that's why Gemara gets a bracha as well. That's the diak in Rabbeinu Yonah that you have uh, in Meseches Brachas. Now we get to a third or a fourth idea. Remember, we said Berchaz Mitzvah, Berchaz Oda, Rechaim, Chefzah Torah. That might be like Shevach or not. Number four, the most surprising approach that you might say. Number of Achronim, the stipler, in source 20, says there's a third category. Berchaz Torah is Berchaz Hanehenen. Whoa. The stipler says, how do you know if something's a berchaz mitzvah or a berchaz anenin? Berchaz anenin is always, the language is the creation of the item. Bore mine mezonos. Bore peri adama. Berchaz mitzvah is always on the action. Al mikra megillah, lahavik ner shalchanika, whatever the Lushan is, that's how you know. Berchas HaMitzvah is the, on the action. Berchas Hanenin is on the item. Says the stifler, we make two brachos. Berchas HaTorah. La Asok B'Devrei Torah, that's a Berchas HaMitzvah. Asher Bachar Banu V'Nasalano Az Taraso, that's a Berchas Hanenin. Because after all, that's on the creation and the giving of Torah to us. And that's what he says. Beautiful. Torah number 20. It's not mamish berchazanenin, but it's patterned after, after berchazanenin. And that's Maduk in the Nusuch, as he says. And that's what we say twice a day. Where do we see this? We discussed this a couple of weeks ago in Cheer, a couple of months ago now. I remember the discussion of the Hana'ah, the Talmud Torah. We had the Avram and Ahar. I don't think I gave it to you again. Oh, I did. Next page, source 23. We have the of the ugly towel, which is a little rubbed out on the bottom of the page. Right? That Hana is a primary element. Remember that Abraham in Nahar? Learning makes a nether from a city. You're not allowed to use the swarm in that city. Even though the principle of Mitzvah Slav Lahendo is new. What do you mean? Mitzvah, you could use a lula from the city, but you can't use the swarm because. Learning Torah has an element in it. Part of his definition is the Hana that you get from learning Torah. An Avel can't learn Torah. Yikudei Hashem Yishar Misam Chelev. Simcha. So that Simcha, unbelievable, demands bracha. Lo shayach taim ha mitzvah zlav lahenos nenu, el be mitzvah shikli be maisa. Adam oso sa enam it's kamalut var hana. When it comes to Tom, Tom and Torah, it's different. Tom and Torah is different. And that's even alluded to in one word in Perkei Avot. So Yaakov Kamenetsky, I gave you. We say in the first parak, Abishose B'tzamei Estiv You have to drink thirstily the words of the Torah. How do we drink? If we're really thirsty, we drink. And we enjoy the drink. Sometimes we drink. Stop. Somebody gave us a drink. Thank you. We don't really need it. B'tzamei Estiv the enjoyment that we need. And that's why, uh, Yosef, getting back to your issue, Baharevna, Baharevna, even in, interesting, according to the stipler, that's part of the Birchas HaMitzvah. But it also has a nan element. Make it sweet for us. Baharevna, because part of the mitzvah is to have it sweet. Part of the mitzvah is to enjoy it. It's a Birchas HaNanin. Birchas in a, in a, in a certain, uh, certain way. Again, Berchaz Torah has all of these elements. Berchaz Shevach, Berchaz HaMitzvah, Berchaz Hananin, Berchaz Torah. They all teach us something about Talmud Torah and the Chefz Shal Torah. And when we don't appreciate the Torah, that's cause for Chorban. It's cause for Chorban. So Berchu Batorah Tchila. They didn't recognize, they didn't recognize the uniqueness of learning Torah. They don't, rec- they don't recognize the uniqueness of coming in contact with Torah, the Chefzer Shal Torah. So, Berch about Torah Tchila, right? The famous uh, Ran, the Ran quotes Rabbi Yonah on the top of the, no, that's not there. 
there were the last swords in 31, so they weren't learning Lashma. They didn't rec recognize, they didn't recognize the, the uh, elements, special elements of, uh, of, uh, of Talmud Torah. Um, just one final separate point, it's a separate point, but it's really cool. Um, and that is one thought of Reb Salvechik. I'm going to send something for Shavuos. It's in any part of the shear. Right here, these three minutes. Getting back to the, the um, Hefzik question. Right? Why is there no problem of Hefzik by Talmud Torah? We learn in the morning, then we learn three hours later, we can just come back and, uh, and learn again without making another bracha. So there is a Tosfis, source 25. Tosfis says, what does Tosfis mean? Tosfis asks this question, why is Torah different than Sukkah? Ishlomar, the shiny Torah. She'eno miya'esh daito. Torah is different because you never give up your das. It calls sha'a the chuyav lil mode. Every hour, the chuyav to learn. It's kilo you're learning all day. What does that mean? Ilu, you're learning all day. That's why you don't think about it. You're not learning. You're at work. You're at playing ball. What does that mean? Rev. Salvechik gave a beautiful shot. It's a title of an article. You probably have it in the library. It's called Shiur Arav. And the title of the article is Impromptu Remarks at a Siyam on Maseches Chulim. That's the name of the article. Halavai. And then there's a 10 page article. Halavai, the imp our impromptu remarks. Should be so amazing. The Rav quoted this Tosfos to explain what is this when we say at a at a siyum hadron, hadron alach. Jonathan, you making a siyum today, or you made it already? I don't know where that's. Uh, uh yesterday from we did for my uh, great grandmother. Okay, social. you made it already. Okay, so for the next siyum you'll say this part, right? The Rav said. The Rav said, what does hadron alach mean? Hadron, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Hadron alach. The Rub says there are two types of aware <laughs> awarenesses. Acute awareness and latent awareness. When children are home in the house, children are home in the house, a mother is acutely aware of her children. They're home. Uh, they're home, and she knows that they're home. She's dealing with them. Acute awareness. Let's say the kids go to school. Let's say the kids are out of the house. Mother's doing other things, but in the back of her mind are her kids. A mother always has her kids in the back of her mind. Latent awareness. Acute awareness, latent awareness. Whatever you're learning right now is acute awareness. Whatever you learned and you're not learning at this moment is latent. Hadron Allah means, I'll come back to you. Right now I finished this Masechta, I'm moving the compartment of this Masechta from my acute awareness to my latent awareness. But I'm not totally forgetting it. Hadron Allah. And that's the Pshad of Totsu, says the Rav. A person doesn't forget the aura. It's just latent awareness. When somebody's not in the sukkah, so then halachically, they're not in the sukkah. They're not connected to sukkah at all. The Torah, a Jew is always connected to. Even if he has no intention, the Jew always has, deep down, his neshama is always has latent awareness to Torah. And that's how we have to condition ourselves to make sure that we always we have to have a, a lot of acute awareness, but even if not, as much latent awareness as we could have, even when we're not learning, always live by the Torah and live by its dictates and think about it and um, stand up for its values even when, not, when we're not actually involved in the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Anyway, these are some points about Berchaz Torah. There's more. But, uh, it's a, it's a great base, Halevi, on Parshas Mishpatim. I don't think I gave it to you, but uh, feel free to look, look there. There's a Lavush on the back page. Lavush talks about why two brachas. Maybe the first one is a bracha la'achareha from the previous day's learning, and the second one is the, the bracha la'fanel for today's learning. Anyway, fascinating uh, in Yana. But we'll, uh, we'll stop here.